Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared My 101, and I am on vacation this week. That's why all you guys that are PMing me aren't getting answers. So, <laughs> it's actually last week I'm filming this and trying to get some videos done. I figured now would be a good time to do another budget gear rundown list. I try to do these about every six months because it's one of the most common questions that I get. Now there's two types of videos uh, that I do when it comes to products generally. Uh, there's reviews and there's recommendations. See every review is not a recommendation. Some people get that a little twisted up sometimes. So what we're going to talk about today is a mix. We're going to talk about uh, woods items, so people that are building up a kit and a couple things that fall into the EDC category, but those EDC items also end up being useful in the woods, either which way. So if you wanna find out what my current, so let's say summer 2017, this is my 2017 budget gear recommendation rundown list. Wanna find out what that is? Don't go away. So pretty much all of these items are going to be proven items. Items that have been around, uh, weathered the test of time, uh, YouTubers, a lot of people have them. They're pretty much universally recommended by their owners. So we're gonna start with the large knife category, the large chopper. And I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. You're like, he's gonna say Joe Sex. No, I'm not. Not that I don't fully recommend Jess X, but the fact of the matter is there is another budget large knife chopper that comes in at half the price or a little more than half of Jess X. So it's only fair, plus I want to exclude my stuff out of these lists because people get skeptical. So that is going to be the Kershaw Camp 10. Now the Kershaw Camp 10, uh, I didn't even mess with it and you know until many years after it came out. Uh, you can find my test of that in Big Bag of Blades 3 Chopocalypse. Now I did have to make a couple minor modifications to this uh, for me to really like it. I had to reprofile the edge. It wasn't sharp to the point that I liked it, but if, if you have any kind of work sharp, it's fairly easy to do that. So I re reprofiled the edge. I added Wilson tape to the handle, which you're like, why, it's rubber. Well, it's a very grippy, uh, gritty rubber. And the Wilson tape uh, just adheres to that really, really well, makes it smoother, much, much more comfortable. And then the final modification I did to it, because it's got a rattly sheath, is I took a heat gun and heated up that plastic, which was a little bit of a task until I could push in on the back of that plastic a little bit in order to give the sheath Kydex-like retention. So once all that was done, I mean, these things run about $30, $32. 65MN carbon steel, very tough. Uh, you can baton with it, you can chop with it. it. For the money, it's really, really hard to beat. Let's jump over to folding saws real quick. Uh, this one has not changed. You've heard me mention it many, many times uh, for a budget saw. For the money, there's nothing better. And that is the Corona razor tooth saw. You can generally find the, you can find them on Amazon, but you can find them locally generally at Lowe's uh, if you're in the US for anywhere between 17 to $20. Price kind of fluctuates a little bit. So there's that. Another one that pretty much never changes when it comes to machetes. Price varies on these, uh, depends on where you get them at. I've seen them as low as $10. I have been told, I haven't seen it locally at mine yet, but I've been told they've been showing up in, in uh, Lowe's lately. And that's just the tried and true Tramontina 18 inch machete. Uh, easy to modify it. I, I put a drop point on it. I shaped the handle, wrapped the handle, stained the handle, sharpened it. This thing 
holds up. This thing holds the test of time. They've been around forever. They'll last forever if you take care of them. When it comes to machetes, just stick with the classic and you'll have no problems. All right, let's jump over to primary fixed blades. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit different. There's going to be, they're both what I consider budget, but bear with me. For the people that are on a strict, strict, strict budget, now you now figure if you're building a kit, you've already got the camp 10 and you've, and you've got the saw and all that stuff. All you need the thing to do is be a good knife. Well, for the money, a, a Mora 511 Basic runs between, you know, depending on what handle color you get, runs between nine and twelve dollars. Ninety degree spine, easy to work with, great knife. Now, if you want something just slightly different, maybe with a little bit more, slightly, a uh, bit more blade to it, not much, but a little bit more blade, maybe a little bit on the thickness and more of a rubbery handle. I would say the Mora Craftline Pro C, uh, not the Robust, but the Pro C would be my pick. And the reason for that, a lot of people say, well, the Robust is thicker. Yeah, but thickness takes away from precision when it comes to you know knives, like bushcraft knives. That's, like, that's why like the, the Jessamic is, is a thinner knife. It's like an eighth inch uh, thick knife. Uh, it just makes it, it, it's the little things that you'll notice when you use knives a lot. Uh, so those would be my two for the people that are on a strict, strict budget. Now for someone that has a little bit more money to spend, I have to say, and you'll see this again soon, uh, the Tarava Jakari Puko 110. And I just got a 140, so I'll be doing a video on that. But this one runs around 66 US dollars. So that may seem like, well, that's not budget. Here is why I count this as a budget knife. Because the Jakari Puko is $66, but it's not competing with the Moras. It's not competing with those budget knives. This is a knife that's competing with the more expensive knives. The LT Wrights, the Bark Rivers, and all that stuff. Full tank, I mean, watch my video on this knife. It is by far, in my opinion, the best bushcraft knife you can buy for under $100. And that's why I'm including it in this list. Even the sheath, if you get the, the leather sheath, the plastic insert. See, I actually carry this knife in my rotation. Some days this is the knife I use instead of my own stuff. And for 66 bucks, it has to be in this list. It has to be because of the knives that it's competing with. So we got one more thing that falls into the woods category and that's going to be a small axe. Now most people who watch me a lot know that I'm not a big fan of axes. It's not that I really have anything against axes. I just, it drives me crazy. The people out there that have these rules stuck in their head and that they take all knives and put them into one category. The knives are for knives and axes are for chopping. When you cannot put a Jess X and a Mora 511 in the same category, you just can't. So I tend to like uh, chopping knives more, but every once in a while, I will use this. And I will show you exactly why this is a recommended item for people that want a small ax and that is the Schrade uh, SCX 2L. Now this is the larger one. So if need be, you can actually get two hands on it to power chop, to split wood. It'll split firewood, no problem. It's got a nice knurled pommel. We've all heard the story about the handle material. The handle material was improved a couple years ago to uh, fiberglass reinforced nylon. I can't break this stuff. Even at negative 20 outside, I can't break it. So it's gonna be a little bit more reliable than even wood. It does come with a ferro rod in the handle. But here's the key thing of why I think this is the best option for a small hat, uh, small ax, large hatchet for people starting out. One, price tag is going to be around 40 bucks. Two, 
the shape. Take a look at the shape. It is almost, if you flipped it over, it's like you're looking at an ulu. It have, has that symmetrically sweeping edge. Now it is, uh, I want to say 3CR, which in an ax head is fine, takes a beating. You will have to do some more edge maintenance, but that edge maintenance will not be difficult. But the reason why I like this for people starting out and people like me that don't use axes a lot is what I noticed way back when I was uh, trying out the Fiskars X7, which at the time is like, that was the one everybody was getting with the flat edge. I found that you had to be a lot more precise with your chopping and your aim uh, to do it effectively. Where this, with that symmetrically sweeping blade and that almost like fire axe shape, it's gonna be a little bit more forgiving on your angle. So more of your chops are going to be efficient. They're gonna do more. And most of the people I, I hear that hate on these have never used them. Uh, trade cheap China, blah, 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 but they've never used them. Uh, everyone that I know that's actually used these actually likes it. But you know, there's some people that eventually they're like, nah, I don't like having to work on the edge all that much, so they get something else. If you have a work sharp or something like that, it's a piece of cake. It's really easy to touch this up in the field with just a, uh, uh, a, a diamond sharpener or a, or a diamond rod or whatever. It's easy. It's easy to work with and it will hold up. And that's why this is recommended on the budget list. Let's quickly talk about a couple items I don't have out here to show you uh, that can be generic. So things that are on the outdoor or survival bushcraft, essentials list, so on and so forth. The first is gonna be a tarp. You don't need a fancy Silni tarp. You don't need uh, a fancy waxed canvas bushcraft tarp. You just don't. Now, if you're an ultralight backpacker, then yeah, okay, now maybe the Whenever you're dealing with ultralight stuff, then you start talking about more expensive things like thin cell nylon. But just get yourself a freaking tarp from Walmart or Harbor Freight and it will work just fine. It will hold up through many, many, many uses. Uh, I still use those. You know, I get the big ones from Harbor Freight for base camp in a bag. It costs 16 bucks for 15 by 11. A plain old eight by 10 from Walmart in the camping section, if it's, if it's the one that are brown and like a thicker mill, those things last forever. The one that I had in my backyard when I started this channel four years ago, I still have it, still holds up. Are they a little bit slightly bulkier? Yes. Might they weigh a little bit more? Yes. But are they perfectly fine for use when you're starting out and you're building a budget kit? Yes, they're fine. When it comes to stainless steel containers, you know, you got the clean canteens, which, you know, cost upwards of 30 bucks i see stainless stain ugh. i see stainless steel containers all the time in budget stores and discount stores and and all that you just gotta look at it carefully make sure it's stainless steel it's not aluminum make you know the aluminums are generally gonna have a liner on the inside which can become toxic if you're heat heated up in a fire so so make sure it's stainless steel just shop around look around there's not like one specific one that i'm going to recommend and then the other thing is cordage and when it comes to cordage uh i you know my favorite cordage uh for doing things like neck lanyards is the atwood 554 strand cord but for just having cordage for doing work uh bank line otherwise known as tarred twisted nylon and the most common one that we use is going to be number 36 because number 36 is a good strong one. I don't remember the actual test strength, but it's, it can actually be used rather well in a makeshift uh, bow set. And you can break it down into three separate smaller strands. They're basically sold in one pound rolls. So the thicker bank line that you get, uh, you're gonna have less feet of cordage the bigger you get because they're all sold by weight. And when you get down to the smaller stuff, 
Uh, number 11, I think, is like the smallest one that I'll actually use. You're going to get a lot more cordage because it's sold by weight. So those are like the, the three big things. I don't have anything specific uh, to show you, but I just want to talk about real quick. Now, what about the EDC stuff? When talking about folding knives, this is the area where, take this with a grain of salt, there are so many folding knives out there. It is absolutely ridiculous. So all I can really base it on is I chose two folders that I actually own for the budget. Now one is going to be uh, the high-end budget and the other one's going to be the low-end budget. So for the high-end budget, I chose the SE Zancudo. So this is about a $30 knife. It is AUS-8A steel, liner lock. And the reason I like this one is because it is thin, it's well made, it's got good action, it's not too big, it's not too small, it doesn't look threatening, uh, it's not going to take up a lot of space in your pocket. It's important to note that this is basically, uh, let's say, a branded or labeled knife. SC themselves do not manufacture this. Uh, I believe it's Blue Ridge Knives. Yeah, Blue Ridge Knives actually manufactures it for SE and puts like the SE stamp on it. So they're made in Taiwan, but they're really, really nicely made knives. But I, as I did with the fixed blades, I wanted to have something in there that is uh, on the lower end of the price tag. And I had to go through the ones that I had and look them up to see exactly what the prices were. This is one I've never actually shown in a video. I actually got it in a big box of shreds to test, but this is a Smith & Wesson SW603. So for the people that want the bigger, more tactical type of uh, folders, this one's got a nice big grip to it, G10 handles like a, a black stone wash finish, tanto point, uh, thumb studs, and a flipper. So it's got pretty good action. It does come with like a nice paracord lanyard, which I took off. But this uh, sells on Amazon for about 19 bucks. Steel is 8CR 13 MOV, which is a commonly used budget steel in knives. Kershaw uses it a whole lot. It's easy to maintain. Uh, works really well but for 19 bucks this was probably the best one I had in that price range don't typically carry it it's just in my drawer I mean I've got <laughs> I have a $250 folder in my pocket right now so that's what I'm carrying but I have used it before and in that price range it's actually got a really nice ergonomic feel to it not bad. The next item is gonna be equally useful whether it's everyday carry or out in the woods. You absolutely need one of these things. Uh, people have heard me say many, many times before, it is my, it is considered by me to be the second most important everyday carry item and that is a flashlight. And people that have watched my channel recently should automatically know which ones they're gonna be because they're actually the only game in town right now when it comes to budget lights Be yeah you can get budget lights all day long from those uh, China sites that have all these names you've never heard of but these ones we're talking about the WowTac so for this we've got the WowTac A1S and then we've got the A2S so this is the headlight I took the headlight off this is set up for pocket carry right now both of these are 1100 lumens on max and they're 29 bucks now they have the regular versions which are the a1 and the a2 which max out at 550 lumens and they're 19 bucks and they come with the battery and the battery is usb rechargeable it's like you there's nothing else out there right now at that price range and the, vid the videos are getting out there. I've done them, other people have done them. They're tough lights, they hold up. Very, very well made. So without a shadow of a doubt right now, WowTac pretty much owns the budget flashlight market. And I will be doing this week, either before this video or after this video, the, uh, the review on the Black Scout Survival Edition of the A1S, which has the, uh, the different finish 
and the removable strike bezel and red filter. And that's only $10 more than this. So $39. Bucks. <laughs> you absolutely, there's nothing else in town to compete with these. Right now, they own the market in budget lights. So been using them a lot. Cannot recommend them enough for people on a budget. The last item that we're gonna cover in the budget series is gonna be portable power. So we're gonna have a budget choice and we're gonna have a super budget choice. For the budget choice, uh, and I went through, you know, because sometimes things are on sale, so before I did this video, I went through, checked all the ones I had, looked at the prices, weighed the options before I made my decision. And for the primary budget choice, that's going to be the Anchor Fusion 5000, which is the one that has the flip out uh, prong so you can actually plug this into the wall and charge it and it can serve as both a portable battery and a two port wall adapter 5000 mAh total capacity I've got a little rubber band or bracelet I don't even know where this came from but I just wrapped that around there and I put two cords on there $25 on Amazon that is awesome but there is a super budget option, which is, I don't have it to show you, which means the kids have it. It's probably under their beds or something. See, I, they know where I keep all my chargers and they grab them to power their tablets. Anyway, it's the Thrunight C2 charger. Uh, not expensive at all, off the top of my head. I wanna say it's 15 bucks. Uh, it's powered by an 18650, which comes included in the charger. So the capacity is not going to be as much as the 5,000. Uh, you're, you're looking at 3,200 capacity on an 18650. But what's nice about the C2 charger is it is both a power bank and a charger itself. So you can use the C2 to power your phone or you can use the C2 to charge an 18650. So you've got input and output. So it's, it's uh, it's a really, really good option because it's not bulky. It's not gonna take up a lot of room in your pocket and your bag for EDC. And once you've actually depleted your charger, you have the option of just slapping a new 18650 in it. So let's say for instance, you're stuck out somewhere, you need to call for help, your phone is about to die, and so's your C2 charger. What do you do? Well. If, you got, if you've got a uh, 18650 battery, or 18650 flashlight, you can take the battery out of the flashlight, put it in the charger, power your phone, call for help, boom, you're saved. So it's, it's versatile and very, very affordable. That's why I like it. So there you go, folks. That's it for uh, summer 2017 rundown, best budget gear, in my opinion. Uh, these are actually recommendations, not reviews, which means I have, I am, completely comfortable and confident that anybody that is purchasing these items is going to be well served by them. And I think they do a lot for the money and they're especially good for the people that just aren't concerned with having the latest and greatest stuff. They don't care to have a $200 Bark River or they don't have to have, you know, the Grand's First Brooks Axe or you know any of this any of the more expensive stuff because Either they're on a budget or maybe they, they just don't feel that they get to go out in the woods all that often enough to warrant that extra cost for those items. Either which way, they're gonna serve you very well. Any of these things that do have links uh, in the Amazon store, I will put the links in the description box below. If they don't, I will put links to whatever website is currently selling them. So there you go, folks. Chris from Prepare My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Uh, links to the store and everything like that are down below. I'll be back with another video here soon. So see you then.